Real Madrid with a comeback win against Wesker. Zidane with a severely depleted team, although there were still many of his big stars in that starting 11, Janic. But the biggest that shone brightly today was Rafael Varane with two goals for his team. Talk to me a bit about that. Well, I mean, I think that's that's great. Obviously, you know, first things first before we get to the Real Madrid uh, in how they played and where they are right now, because uh, this was always going to be tricky, wasn't it? You've mentioned, I mean, the fact that they had only 17 uh, players on the bench as well. And of course, we all know the number of key players that are, that are missing. But, you know, you are playing against the team that's desperate. They're, they're bottom of the of the La Liga as well. Team, by the way, that had a number of chances went ahead uh, after this wonderful strike for Mojave Galan. Uh, uh, you know, Rafa Mir, I mean, tremendous, tremendous performance from once again. Courtois saved him uh, on that header, hit the crossbar, and in the fourth minute had a great opportunity as well. So all in all, this was always going to be tricky for Real Madrid. And there are times, especially like these, when the team and the manager and Zidane Zidane are under tremendous amount of pressure that you have to get these results. So I think it's significant and, and, and it would be almost too easy to stick the boot in. Wait for that. I'll do that later. <laughs> uh, really, because, uh, because I think, you know, the, the, these are important three points given the circumstance. Well, you wouldn't be the only person to stick the boot in. In fact, there was quite a fiery pre-match press conference from Zinedine Zidane ahead of this game. And one of the things that he did say was he said, let us fight until the end. We won La Liga in the summer, not 10 years ago. We know that there are going to be changes next season. So he's a little bit annoyed because he says that when there's a loss or a draw, people are saying he should be out. And he was very vocal about it going into this game. What's your stance on the manager there? It's look, it's it's unusual even for him to give in to that sort of pressure. He's been around, right? I mean, he's been around not just as a manager, a still relatively young manager, but as a player as well. So so for the press to get to him like that, you know, because he was stating the obvious uh, reasons as well. But uh, you know, this is Real Madrid, and and I can understand his fr uh, frustration because he's being asked to sort of replicate the success that he's had in the past with players that are either past their peak, you know, some of the veterans, they're still, you know, good. We've seen, of course, today, even Modric, it's at time brilliant and, and uh, you know, and Benzema, of course, he's still very good and very much underappreciated, but it makes you wonder, you know, how much better are they, they going to get in the future? So he's being asked you know, to balance that with those players and young players and experienced players, they're kind of caving under pressure a little bit. And you can understand that because this is, after all, arguably the heaviest shirt in the world's football. So I can understand the frustration, but I just, I just don't get this Real Madrid team. I don't tune in for this sort of Real Madrid team. And I'm sure many new neutrals don't. Do you think part of it might be them being careful? Because although there were some big names, as we saw, there was barely any choice for him to bring off the bench. There were players up there on the bench today for them because of how depleted they've been that haven't actually even played in La Liga. And I know it's a big team like Real Madrid, but still with all the games that we're seeing for all the big teams across Europe, they are still having to rely on their benches right now because of the run of games that we're seeing. Well, well see, see, the problem is is more general because today I have no issue with Real, uh, with Real Madrid. They found a way. It didn't look that way because, you know, I mean, not only were they behind, there was an, an immediate chance from Rafa Mir after that to make it 2-0, but none of that matters. They, they have found a way. The bigger question is, Kay, for, uh, for me, is that if everybody was available, is it still a team that you feel confident is the sort of uh, a team that, that, look, I mean... La Liga, and to a great degree, UEFA relies on a big time Real Madrid. The Galacticos, we need them. That's the identity. Let's not kid ourselves here. I mean, Real Madrid only exists for the global fan base because they wanted to tune in to watch that. I know the times are difficult, okay, but they have the money and who knows, maybe in the summer uh, they'll prove us wrong. But I, I just think there was a little bit of a, of a movement for young players. That's not Real Madrid. Okay, Barcelona maybe, right? I mean, their academy, we've seen players coming through. Remember, we want to watch Real Madrid with the greatest players, you know, that you can, you can find. That's been their history and that's going to have to be the history. La Liga needs 
strong Real Madrid. Barcelona, by the way, as well. But this is Real Madrid game, right? They need that. And UEFA and Champions League, to a large degree, do, does as well because they want to expand. They want to get more money. And again, given this team, let's say everybody's healthy. You'd be hard pressed to tell me that this is what the global base wants to come in and watch this sort of Real Madrid. So there's a disconnect, in my opinion, and that even goes to a degree with Sergio Ramos and his issue, because I do think they need him because he's part of that identity as well, and he needs to be resigned. So that is my problem in general. But for today, you take the points and, you know, you got to keep up with the Joneses because it's not looking all that great. Tony Cross today uh, uh, picked up a yellow card. He'll be suspended uh, for the next game. Uh, so more issues in terms of that squad. Just on a lighter note, maybe Benzema should be taking a few more free kicks. Came very close in that game, didn't he? Yes, yes. But, you know, I mean, give it to Varane because two set pieces and he didn't give up on him, right? I mean, you know, Benzema, as you've mentioned, beautiful strike of the crossbar and he comes in and then, you know, set piece from Tony Cross as well with Casemiro, you know, obviously with that header saved right into the path of Varane, but he was there or thereabout. We know he can do that, but today was an important one for him. So, look, I have no problem with Benzema. He's He's obviously very often under underappreciated, but he is still, in my opinion, a complementary piece to what once was Cristiano Ronaldo and what may be, right? You don't want to put, you know, Benzema at the age of 33 in a position where you ask him to, to score 25, 30, 35 goals. That's just not going to happen. And it shouldn't. It's not on him. OK, so Real Madrid with a comeback win against Wesca. Three very important points, points at a difficult time for Zinedine Zidane's men. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.